Welcome. This is the complete audiobook of Leviathan and Names of Other Spirits by Wynne Worley. If you would like an online PDF copy of this book, it is available for free download from Straightway Truth Ministry at straightwaytruth.com, spelled S-T-R-A-I-T-W-A-Y-T-R-U-T-H.com, and click on to the Resources tab at the top for the link. If this reading is blessing you and you realize you have a need for deliverance, an experience in viable healing and deliverance ministry is Straightway Truth Ministry at straightway.com, S-T-R-A-I-T-W-A-Y.com or straightwaytruth.com. You can also call the dining hall at 615-688-3025. The ministry is under the leadership of Pastor Charles Dow Jr., and you can reach his YouTube page at user Pastor Dow. That's P A S T O R D O W E L L. Thank you. And now on to the reading Leviathan and Names of Other Spirits by Wynne Worley. Who is Leviathan? There is a strong evil spirit named Leviathan. This extremely powerful demon has been repeatedly encountered. The more we know about what he does and how he operates, the more likely we are to win in this fierce contest with him. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Psalm 74, 13, 14. Here, Leviathan is associated with water and the ocean and is pictured with multiple heads. There go the ships. There is that Leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein. Psalm 104, 26. In that day, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing spirit, even Leviathan, that crooked spirit, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Isaiah 27, 1. Here he is called both a dragon and a serpent, and again is connected with the sea. The most extensive reference to this strange creature is found in Job 41. The fact that the Bible devotes an entire chapter describing him indicates his importance. The modern language translation reads, Can you draw out the crocodile with a hook or hold down his tongue with a cord? Can you put a fish line through his gills or pierce his jaws with a spur? Will he make repeated requests of you? Will he use friendly words in addressing you? Will he make a bargain with you as you should take him as your servant for life? Would you play with him as the birds or keep him as a plaything for your girls? Will fishermen bargain over him, apportioning him among the merchants? Can you fill his skin with barbed darts or his head with harpoons? Lay your hand upon him, then remember the conflict. You will not do it a second time. The man who hopes to master him will be disillusioned. At the sight of him, a man is paralyzed. No one is foolhardy enough to stir him up. Who then is he that can stand before me? And whom have I borrowed that I should have to repay him? Everything under the whole heaven is mine, and I will not be silent concerning his limbs, his strength, his artistic proportions. Who has ever stripped off his thick coat of mail or pierced his impenetrable scales? Who can open the doors of his mouth? Around his teeth there is terror. His back is shingled with scales, closely fitted together with a tight seal. So near are his scales to one another that no air can get between them. They clasp one another, joining so closely they cannot be separated. His sneezing sparkle light. His eyes are like rays of morning. Out of his jaws come burning torches and sparks of fire shoot out. From his nostrils 
Vapors issue as steam from a boiling pot over burning rushes. His breath sets coals on fire. A flame issues from his mouth. Such strength dwells in his neck that panic moves before him. The folds of his flesh close in on each other firmly and are immovably cast upon him. His heart is as hard as a rock, solid as a nether millstone. When he raises himself up, the mighty are afraid and are beside themselves with panic. To hit him with a sword is useless. So is a spear, a dart, or a javelin. To him iron is as straw, and copper as rotten wood. Arrows do not rout him. Sling stones he treats as stubble. Clubs are counted by him as reeds, and he mocks the rattle of javelins. His nether parts are like potsherds. They leave threshing sledge grooves in the mire. He makes the deep to boil like a pot, the sea like a vessel of ointment. Behind him he leaves a foaming wake, and one wonders if the sea might be growing fast. On earth there is not his equal, a creature devoid of fear. He looks down on all that is highest. He is king over down on all that is highest. He is king over all the sons of pride. Job 41, 1 through 34. By his spirit he hath garnished the heavens. His hand hath formed the crooked serpent. Job 26, 13. Leviathan particularly hates these passages and the first and second commandments. Although we know little about Leviathan's work, this chapter and other references definitely connect him with the sea. Undoubtedly, he is the inspiration for the various mythological gods of the sea, Neptune, Poseidon, Dagon, and others. Always there is one demon god with his characteristics who rules the seas or rivers. Some believe Leviathan was the chief deity worshipped in Atlantis and that his kingdom was destroyed by God in judgment. Confronting Leviathan in deliverance has uncovered only a few of the many things that he does. Repeatedly, Leviathan has been the culprit when there have been severe problems with Bible study or concentration on spiritual goals. Restrictive bondages, which hinder worship, or most any genuinely spiritual activity have involved him also. I refer to a real flowing with the Holy Spirit, not the shallow religious externals which often pass for spirituality today. Another area where he works is learning difficulties for youngsters, including reading. Often painful stiffness in the neck and shoulder region have been traced to Leviathan. As he begins to manifest, many times these symptoms will surface. Although this is not the only source of such problems, it is wise to check Leviathan. One of the immediate blessings from the expulsion of Leviathan is a radical change in outlook and approach to spiritual growth. Many report a clearing of confusion and a greatly increased ability to read and retain the word of Yah. Following the long, detailed description of the monster, tongue-in-cheek, God asks if you would care to make a pet of him. This would be like taking to a Tyrannosaurus home for a pet. If we could see these awesome powers we attack, we would appreciate even more the superior power given to us by the Lord. Not only can we confront, but we can attack these tremendous creatures with impunity. This explains their fuming anger, fury, and frustrated rage. The Bible speaks often about loosing captives, and this was prophesied about Jesus. As we follow Jesus and learn to do his works, we must loose the captives. Held prisoner by demonic forces, freedom is available. God has ordained it and we must never let the ridicule or opposition of ignorant and foolish people prevent us from pursuing deliverance. Always there will be those who misunderstand what we are doing and why. 
In their ignorance, they will even think us to be enemies of the gospel and the church. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. John 16.2 Satan's prison house still holds multitudes in dreadful bondage, and he uses cruel creatures such as Leviathan to drive, to harass, and to torment destroying all hope. To be a captive is a terrible, miserable existence. When demons gain the upper hand in lives, seizing control, they force victims into abject slavery to every whim of the spirits. Surely we must storm the citadels of the adversary and destroy Leviathan's kingdom. Leviathan, king over the children of pride. As mentioned earlier, Job 41 is the key passage about Leviathan. Most of those who have this powerful spirit never get delivered, for one of his chief jobs is to block deliverance. Ministers refusing to open up to the ministry of deliverance are controlled by a Leviathan spirit who is their chief problem. Most who fight the deliverance ministry have powerful Leviathan spirits and are rarely delivered. Strong's Concordance, number 3882, number 3867, defines Leviathan as a wreathed animal or a serpent. He is also called the constellation of the dragon or Orion. Within, within the constellation Orion, there are seven stars, each with a name. These names have been found helpful in dislodging Leviathan in deliverance. Pleiades and Articus are two of the seven stars, demons, tied in with Leviathan. Often when you manage to force them out, Leviathan also suffers defeat. Another word for Leviathan means to twine, to unite, and to remain. Again, we are reminded of his serpentine nature and that he is a strong man. A word which occurs six times in the Old Testament comes from a root word which means to bend or twist. It means literally wreathed, like a wreath, to be wreathed, gathering itself in folds. The context suggests some form of aquatic monster which dwells in the sea. In the scriptures, the sea represents nations of people. The sea is the voice of many waters or many peoples in the book of Revelation. Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces, and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Psalm 74, 14. This is a reference to Pharaoh and the Exodus, which parallels with another Hebrew word, Tanan, which means a sea or river monster. The word occurs again in Ezekiel 29, 3-5, symbolizing Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Oftentimes, there is an Egyptian spirit tied in with Leviathan, a spirit of the world and worldliness. In Job, reference is made to a dragon. According to ancient mythology, a dragon was supposed to cause eclipses by wrapping himself around the sun. Leviathan was considered to be a great mythical monster and was identified with the Babylonian mother goddess, Timot. The father of Timot was Apsu in the Babylonian creation story. This monster fought with Marduk by reciting charms and casting witchcraft spells. In the word, there is a seven-headed monster which takes us back to the constellation Orion and its seven stars. The seven heads are the seven stars, and the creature is described as a fleeing serpent, the torturous serpents smitten by Baal. There is a dragon in the sea, people or nations, and God is going to slay him. Isaiah 27, 1. The noun translated Leviathan may also designate serpents, such as might be roused by snake-charming magicians. These men were also reputed to be able to impose curses. Therefore, snake-charming curses are involved here. There is another root word, lawa, in the Hebrew. Strong's number 1087, used once in Ecclesiastes 815. 
It refers to the joining of an item or a person to someone or something else. Significantly, we believe that in the Bible, this refers to foreigners who join God's people as converts, the joining of an alien thing to God's people. Then I commended mirth, because a man hath no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be merry. For that shall abide with him of his labors the days of his life, which God giveth him under the sun. Ecclesiastes 8.15 In general, I think this refers to the way which hedonistic pleasures stay with a man. These pleasures will cling to a man. Again, the reference is to clinging, writhing, and twisting. They get caught up with a man internally. Job 41 says, Canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook, or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? In a Dallas congregation, there was a man from a hard background, a career army officer in Vietnam. When he came home, his brains were scrambled. Officials of the army had judged him to be a 100% disabled schizophrenic. He appeared on the preacher's doorstep one day after hearing his radio program. Six months ago, began a battle such as had never been seen by these workers before. Being a disabled veteran, he is required to report every month to a psychiatrist to maintain his disability. After deliverance, he came to the preacher and said he was so much better that he was no longer schizophrenic. His question was, what am I going to tell them when I go back to for my interview. The pastor asked what they wanted to find out. He said they just wanted to know whether or not he was still crazy. He was advised him to tell him that what happened to him in deliverance. It worked. After that report, they were absolutely convinced that he was insane. In his Bible studies, he came to believe that behemoth, Job 40, might be lodged in the will of a man. That big, sluggish animal is strong, brassy, and very hard to budge. Leviathan represents or burrows into the self of a man. The whole context of the book of Job is an ongoing debate between Job and his friends. Finally, God announces that he has had enough and demands an answer. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding, canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? Job 38.4.31 Here at the culmination of an entire revelation, God gives this righteous man of God an entire discourse about Leviathan. Some call him a crocodile, but he is an evil spirit. Although we do not have complete understanding, we can utilize what we do comprehend. When we get down to that real, true self, we are in Leviathan's stronghold, deep inside. Even after ousting him, self-will remains. The king may say that this is as far as he is willing to go. If you heed him, he will go no farther. Job 48 Job 41.8 Job 41.8 warns that when we attack Leviathan, we will remember the struggle and will not want to repeat it. This reminds us of our old self who wants things to remain hidden. Job 41.15 reveals that Leviathan is proud of his scales, which are so tightly sealed that no air can come between them. In scripture, air, breath, and wind are all synonymous with the Holy Spirit. Because of the effects of Leviathan's tight coils about them, victims are so closed in and choked that the moving of the Holy Spirit is inhibited. They can neither hear nor discern the Spirit. Therefore, they never get a word from the Lord, nor do they move in the gifts. The reason is that no heir of the Spirit is able to get in because of this demonic stranglehold. Scales are said to be joined together and cannot be sundered. By his sneezings a light doth shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Job 41, 18, 19. 
This brings to mind James' reference to the tongue kindling a fire. Problems involving loose tongues root in Leviathan. Any time he infiltrates a church, he looses some of that fire, and soon the whole place is ablaze. Out of his nostrils goes smoke, as out of a seething pail or cauldron. Job 41, 20. This refers to a cutting, critical tongue rooted in a spirit of pride. This smoke going out of Leviathan's nostrils represents false praise and worship. It is like the smoke going up from the incense burning of Nadab. Because the person is so bound with pride and self-importance, he is unable to really praise God. The man wrapped up in himself makes a very small package. In verse 22, in his neck remaineth strength. Stick-necked pride and stubbornness work with the Leviathan. Sometimes strength in the neck can be a negative thing, because Stephen spoke of those who were stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Acts 7.51 Bowing the neck is rebellion, and this brings us back to pride and sorrow. Dismay goes with stubborn people, just as the flakes or the folds of Leviathan's flesh are joined together, firm in themselves and unable to be moved. These people resist being told anything, for they know it all. Haughtily, they declare, God showed me that a Christian can't have a demon. You're in deception, brother, etc., his heart or chest is said to be as firm as a stone, as hard as a piece of millstone. Verse 24, hard and cold hardness are both tied to Leviathan. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. When he raises up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. Job 41, 24. 25. In verse 31, he makes the deep to boil like a pot. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Psalm 42, 7. The deep is where the real you is located. There is a deep in us, and we are very careful about who we allow to come in there. God can get in there deep calls unto deep. The Leviathan spirit will cause that deep to boil with restless turmoil inside. Sometimes sleep is disturbed because of something boiling around buried inside. This might be a Leviathan spirit at work. This boiling is not only in you, but it also stirs up other people. If you ever spend much time around schizophrenics, you will notice that they will wear you out. They have a problem, and we'll give you one also. We need to become steady and immovable. We should be stirred only about God's righteousness and the evil that is in the world. He maketh a path to shine after him. One who would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth there is not his like, who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Job 41, 32-34 Pride and Leviathan are practically synonymous. It is hard to separate them because pride causes that stony heart to close the scales and folds together. This blocks the Spirit of God from entering. Some sit listening, but neither hearing nor understanding the Word of God. Leviathan's most crucial work is to help prevent people from receiving the things of God and of the Holy Spirit. Rebellious pride often hides for the Spirit, is subtle, and can easily hide himself. He can twist, writhe, and slip out of the way. This can cause one to reject dependence on God and subjection to God. He is very quick to attribute to self the honor due to God alone. This makes this pride the very root and essence of all sin. Long ago, Lucifer declared, I will exalt myself. I will sit on the sides of the north and be king. Isaiah 14. 
The root of his downfall was pride. Me, 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 the awful worship of me who needs no help. If I go to a church, which is really real, they'll get revelation by the spirit of what I need. This is just pride. It is like driving into a gasoline station and telling the attendant, I have an unspoken request to tell the workers, just see what the Lord tells you is rebellious pride in action. The fallen angel described in Luke 10, 18 still has a craving to be like God. As a result of the fall, our whole nature has become infected with pride. The temptation to know good and evil by eating the forbidden fruit was motivated by pride in Adam and Eve. The tree of life was also there, and they were not forbidden to eat from it. Pride drove them to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because we are descendants of Adam, we are easily affected by pride. This is why Leviathan is so strong, powerful, and deeply rooted in us. The fascination with the forbidden feeds Leviathan, who wreathes, coils himself tightly in the inner self. Even after deliverance from Leviathan, there is yet another dimension. Self must be crucified in many areas. For example, people may wish to be delivered from cigarettes, but they also have a part to play. For example, in a deliverance church, a pouting member recently refused to attend church. He had received prayer for deliverance from nicotine, tobacco, etc. He fully expected to get up the next morning with all desire for cigarette completely wiped out. Although this sometimes happens, many times when you get up the next morning, you may have a regular nicotine fit. It does not mean the evil spirit is still there. That is the old selfish man was, that is still down there. The only thing to deal with it is to give orders that it be nailed on the cross. Crosses are instruments of death. It is hard to know where we cross the line from the spirit of pride to just the old self inside who resists humbling himself in submission to God. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. James 4 7. You can resist the devil repeatedly, but unless submission to God comes first, you will not be free. You may have to say, God, I'm going to have to break out of this pride and become submissive to you. This indeed might be the starting place to overthrow pride. The condemnation of the devil is associated with pride. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. 1 Timothy 3.6 Never forget that pride snared the devil himself. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy in the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Proverbs 8.13 God hates pride, therefore there is no place in us for it. Pride, swelling excellence, goeth before destruction and in haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16, 18. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Psalm 10, 4. Pride is declared to be the root cause of atheism. Again, the word here is haughtiness. This brought about King Nebuchadnezzar's downfall in Daniel 4. The dictionary defines pride as an overhigh opinion of oneself, exaggerated self-esteem, conceit, haughty behavior, arrogance, delight or satisfaction in one's own or another's achievements. God hates all of this. An interesting revelation was given to a deliverance pastor about this spirit to help him better understand the working of this powerful spirit. God indicated that Leviathan resides in the holy place and is a counterfeiter. Any study on the tabernacle of Moses will show a fenced outer court with a tent-like structure on the inside containing two rooms. One was the holy place and the other the holy of holies. The holy place was entered daily by ministering priests and contained three pieces of furniture, 
A massive golden candlestick or lampstand was the only light. There was a golden altar of incense where the sweet-smelling smoke rose up, typifying the sweet savor of real worship and prayer to God and a type of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There was also a table of showbread to the right with 12 loaves of showbread, which we were replenished weekly. Before one entered through the second veil into the holy place, he had already been to the brazen altar, salvation, and the laver of cleansing, 1 John 1, nine. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Titus 3.5 The second veil is the place of revelation and illumination by the Spirit of God, symbolized by the oil burning in the lamps. Nourishment is from Jesus, the bread of life, on the showbread of tape. This is where Leviathan headquarters. Nourishment is from Jesus, the bread of life on the showbread table. This is where Leviathan headquarters. He is more interested in spirit-filled people, for they are so thrilled with the part of the truth they have. Until we have learned humility, God cannot trust us with too much lest it corrupt us. We are three-part beings. We are a soul. We have a spirit, and we live in a body. This is a type of the holy place where Leviathan works. He is at work in our soul, mind, will, and emotions. Leviathan attempts to block our entrance into the Holy of Holies, into the very presence of God. This is the third veil, and once there, we will have what we need. This third veil was rent when Jesus died on the cross. This was that veil between the spirit-filled realm and the very presence of God. No man could go there except the high priest, and he could only go once a year. Here Leviathan stands to prevent entrance. He attempts to snuff out the lamps, cut us off from the bread, manna, and seeks to keep us from offering up daily incense, prayer in the spirit. He does not want us to move in the spirit or to have words of knowledge or other spiritual gifts operating in and through us. This demon seeks to choke us with spiritual deafness and blindness and cause us to be tongue-tied. Leviathan resides in the holy place and is a counterfeiter. His seven heads attempt to imitate the seven lamps of Revelation. Thou breakest the head of Leviathan in pieces and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Psalm 74, 14 out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Job 41, 19 the smoke, the smoke from his nostrils is counterfeit prayer and worship at the altar of incense, and he seeks to give a false Pentecostal religious experience. If we are satisfied with the counterfeit, he will have won the victory, even though we are in the area of truth. We will still be bound by error. Many have had these counterfeit experiences. Increasingly, it is necessary to cast out spirits of false tongues. Many require deliverance from false, error-filled ministries and religious evil spirits received by the laying on of hands. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart, to give glory unto my name, saith Yahweh of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already, because ye do not lay it to heart. Malachi 2.1.2 2. When this passage was read in a church, it awakened a man who had been victimized by a false ministry. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you, if ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart, to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already, because ye did not lay it to heart. Malachi 2, 1 and 2. This, 
When this passage was read in a church, it awakened a man who had been victimized by a false ministry. For over five years, it had led him into error. The progression is a spirit of deception who paves the way to receive erroneous teachings and ministry and become deaf to any appeals to reason. After realizing the truth, the man broke away from the cult and joined a sound church. It was here he realized that his blessings had been cursed for those five years. Scripture opened his eyes, lifting blindness, and he received a massive deliverance. Perhaps you too are asleep. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Ephesians 5.14 Leviathan can strangle your experience in God to make you slumber for years without your noticing anything is wrong. The modern church is largely asleep because of Leviathan's work. He loves to eclipse things. Mythology associates him with the eclipse of the sun. He wants to eclipse the S-O-N in your life, but you do not have to submit to this and you can be freed. This powerful spirit is the climactic revelation of Job, and the climax of the book is chapter 41. God reveals the monster, and Job responds in Job 41.5, I've heard, but now I see. Job's primary problem was pride, and God had to hit him hard to help him to see it. There is an end time scene which deals with Leviathan. In that day, the Lord, with his sore and great and strong sword, shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Isaiah 27, 1.